performing stock in the SP 500 so far this year, despite the fact that it had dropped almost 30 points from its peak. What took place to revive this dormant stock? What about this? The company's Blackwell supercomputer chip, which has been the subject of conjecture regarding poor execution, lost opportunities, and irrational queries regarding the true demand for AI hardware in a market rife with fabrications, was clarified by CEO Jensen Wong. More than its share of attention is being paid to NVIDIA. Jensen made the decision to make amends. First, Wong, who I call D. Vinci, because he is a modern-day Renaissance man, stated that we aren't telling the tale correctly during a fireside discussion with David Solomon, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, during the company's Comicopia Technology Conference. In addition to being at the forefront of the AI generation, NVIDIA is also the industry leader in accelerated computing, where its GPUs will eventually replace nearly all of the older, slower chips. Two themes. He then made a statement that caused the stock to soar for days. The bears and the know-nothing critics have been claiming that the company's groundbreaking Blackwell chip is too difficult to produce and could not be ready to be shipped in large quantities by 2024. False. Hear what Jensen had to say. Underscore Blackwell is in full production and we are boosting it. We will begin scaling in Q4 and into the next year after shipping in Q4. There is a lot of demand for it and everyone wants to have the most and be the first. The level of intensity is truly remarkable. Underscore. Talk about comforting phrases, and what do you know, these statements were much needed in the bull market for AI semiconductors. The next thing you know, NVIDIA stock is soaring, as are its fellow passengers, including Broadcom, which, as I just indicated, delivered a quarter that was highly criticized and completely destroyed. Did you know that Broadcom's stock price today was higher than it was prior to that infamous quarter when it appeared to be an ugly duck but was suddenly changing into a beautiful but irate swan? Ever notice how furious swans can get? We live in a very sentimental market, you see. With the exception of the following, it is dangerous to make any inferences based on the movements of stocks like NVIDIA, Broadcom, or even JP Morgan, many firms that are doing good will do much better when the Fed starts decreasing rates. Yes, rate reductions just improve stock performance. In conclusion, I advise keeping things basic. Rate reductions are beneficial. Small rate reductions are excellent since they prevent panic and provide you a lot more rate reductions in the future. I reluctantly believe that those who were disappointed by the prospect of only one 25 basis point rate drop next week are completely uninformed. Let's visit Eric in Massachusetts, shall we? Let me reiterate, Eric, anyone who wants to participate in that game must pay the approximately $100 billion that is due by the next four or five years. This company is simply getting bigger and bigger. No slowdown or changes in the works. Yes, Nvidia receives 40% of it, but they're behaving as though it's finished and kaput. And that's incorrect, in my opinion. The chart is largely to blame. Much of it is due to the fact that they will soon have zero dark 30 possibilities. You know what zero options are. What really disgusts me is the belief that it cannot move until it retests the $90 level at which it traded on yen car day. According to leading market historian Larry Williams, it won't move until October. Be advised that although the large check goes to NVIDIA, it has no bearing on the stock. It also goes to Johnson Controls, Eaton, and Vertiv to little degrees. However, with the $100 billion he mentioned as being owed, only a few companies, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, and Alphabet will be able to afford it. That's all. I believe it is quite reasonable to anticipate that. In the network TV industry, there may be four companies, ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. This isn't about Apple. In this case, Apple is the freeloader. Who knows if they're finished yet? They're the great free rider. What would happen if they had to deal with one of these businesses again? In addition, when I used Gemini and Google, they, in a sense, did not bring home the bacon. No, only the $20 a month chat GPT. No, no, no. Jim is experimenting with all of the generative AI and huge language. It's amazing how contrite they are when they make a mistake. Listen, their absence is a positive thing. I regret not being more contrite in my early years. We're going to be supplanted soon enough. Let's take a rest dot. Yes, are our agents comfortable with it? We have contracts, but as I mentioned earlier, AJGI Robot will take our place after that. Even though I was an Eagles fan, Jensen had me. You claim that, at least in contrast to the previous significant tech bubble, there isn't an AI bubble? You mentioned a few comparisons. It was 52 times forward earnings in 2000, but it is currently 24 times. The net income margin has increased from 16% to 28%. When do they become affordable for you, for those who are not in them to perhaps start at the beginning and establish a position, and where do you locate them now? Yes, I believe that you should have a list of businesses that you hope to own in the future. As a result, NVIDIA is 25% lower than its 52-week peak. 
Charles, it's trading at a forward PE north of 36 times to put that valuation into context. They produce the most cutting edge chips and are the largest and greatest chip maker in the world. They produce burritos and are valued lower than Chipotle. Okay, so I'm happy you mentioned NVIDIA because of course it's at the epicenter. It is the storm's eye. The pace is set by NVIDIA. The problem is that several well-known billionaire investors have recently sold. And 9 million shares were sold by Ken Griffin. 3 million shares were sold by David Tepper. 1.5 million shares were sold by Druckenmiller. Steve Cohen, these are the biggest, smartest people in the world, really. Additionally, NVIDIA is now portrayed on Wall Street as the dumb money play. To that, how would you respond? I would be curious to see what proportion of their portfolios were invested in NVIDIA. Are they simply taking a portion of the profits and cutting them down? It's fascinating to read about Oracle's history and the company's recent recovery. Software has struggled, as evidenced by the hyperscalers NVIDIA and picks shovels. This collaboration with AWS is what we've seen with Oracle's report last night and the subsequent rebound. They are stating that the customer can continue to use the Oracle platform and software in the background, regardless of the hyperscaler they select. You've observed a really robust revenue stream. That, in my opinion, is just more proof that the AI narrative is still in its early to mid-stage stages. Yes, indeed. To tell the truth, I think it's fantastic that it's expanding beyond picks and shovels. Hopefully, I do have Oracle subscribers. While correcting grammar and punctuation mistakes, this revised version keeps the original length, meaning, and flow. Huang also discussed energy efficiency, pointing out that another advantage NVIDIA offers businesses utilizing its technology is that training and subsequently utilizing AI models inference really uses less energy. NVIDIA's stock is rising in response to these remarks, albeit it is still below the day's highs. David, let me get back to you. David regards SEMA. Despite the general market downturn, NVIDIA is one of the few stocks that is currently rising and its products will continue to be in high demand due to artificial intelligence. It's interesting to note that the mutual fund industry considers it underweight. Perhaps that community is the only one. Just to reiterate, you could have looked at the shares back when it was a $3 trillion corporation and said they could double from here. That's why I brought up the market cap issue. Will it truly be a $6 trillion brand though? Many investors stated, well, I don't want to stick around for a 10% or 20% gain when I might have a 40% downside because it is still $2.6 trillion. I would like to attend the double, can this business have a $5 trillion market capitalization? It's challenging to determine. There's nothing I wouldn't rule out. Kelly, I believe you raise a very valid question. However, the same question was being asked about a year and a half ago when it was a billion, a billion and a half. Here we have a stock that has increased by between 125% and 130% so far this year, yet it is still just 30 times profits. That would be my main concern. It seems like a really difficult effort to understand this stock's earnings power. It's among the difficulties.